Hi, this is Tanisha Cottrell, and today I wanted to talk about Get Up. I know it's like a weird title, but I was trying to think of what I was going to talk about today. I had no idea what I was going to talk about. And it's one of those times, I know you hear me on some videos, and I'm like, I really don't have anything to say. And God shut that all the way down a little while ago because he was like, I need to stop saying that. Because as long as I'm being used as a vessel for him and an oracle, a sound system for the kingdom, then I will always have something to say. Because whatever it is that God puts on my heart is what he would intend for me to say. So he will guide me through whatever it is that I need to say or do in this video and in life. So I don't ever have to feel like I'm unprepared for something, no matter what my qualifications are, no matter what it is that I do or what experience I have in whatever area of my life that it is that God opens a door for me in. He will make sure that I get there, even without qualifications. He will make sure that I say the things that need to be said, even if they're not at utter perfection. He will be there making sure that he guides my footsteps so that I go the places that he needs for me to go and not where I think I should be. Because he can overqualify you for any position. You will walk in somewhere and you're missing a credential. You're missing, you're missing some kind of certification. And God will literally make that thing happen. He does <laughs> exceedingly and abundantly above all else. I know I say that a lot, but it's because it's true. When I think about God, I think about abundance. When I think about God, I think about love. I think about understanding, compassion, mercy, grace. I think about how God can use me and guide me, guide my footsteps, guide me to do the things that I'm doing. And it's so funny because I'm not even the type of person who does stuff like this. Like if you I used to have a channel a long time ago and I would just do like hair hairstyle videos because I decided to go natural and just like a little backstory, it's, it's really not super important, but I'm just letting you know so that if you search it and you're like, oh, well, you you look like this other girl. That's probably me. And I just would do like a bunch of different hairstyles because I decided to go natural because my hair was like so short. I mean, I wasn't really, really short, but it was like a while back I had I had my daughter and when I had her. The when, you know, during pregnancy, your hair, your hair, even though you're getting nutrients and stuff to your body, most of it goes to your child. So I was like, oh, my gosh, my hair hasn't been this long since I was a kid. Like when I was a little girl. I'm only telling this because it's relevant, not because I want to make the people feel bad if they watch this video. But when I was a little girl, I used to have hair all the way down here and they decided I needed to get my hair cut. They cut my hair like up to here. And it never grew back. It literally stayed that length all throughout middle school, all throughout high school, all the way until I had my daughter. Like that was the only time my hair finally started growing back after all that time. And I'm not saying that your hair doesn't grow. Of course it grows, grows, but it just never obtained the same type of length that I obtained when I was younger until I went natural. And I'm not like saying it like just because I want everybody to be natural. I think that however you wear your hair is beautiful. Whatever you do that that suits your facial structure, whatever it is that you do that that looks good on you is for you. I'm not one of those natural people that's going to say, oh, well, you you use that in your hair. Like it's your choice. It's your decision. Your hair is beautiful. However, you decide to wear it. Just you know, make sure it fa frames your face, make sure it's a style that goes with your features. Like I said, like when I do updos, my, my facial structure looks good. When I do like two ponytails or I do a high ponytail or I do side ponytails, it looks good. When I do a pulled back, it's like my face doesn't even look like it has the same structure. It just does not look good on me for some reason. Like I don't, it's not that it turns me into someone who's unattractive or something like that. And I will still be beautiful in God's eyes. It's just that it just, it doesn't suit my face as much as uh, updo does, or as much as like the, the ponytail down, ponytails down or my hair down does. And so I try to be mindful of that, no matter how my hair is, like whether it's in a curly state or whether I get it straightened because I need to get my ends trimmed or something like that. So Usually 
what I try to do is like three times a year, I'll straighten my hair. Sometimes it's only two times or it used to be once when I first went natural. But I know like during the year, there's so many different like there's like the air and all of the like all of the things that's happening outside, all the elements are like ending up, you know, messing with your hair. And then if you wear your hair down a lot, it's messing with ends and, you know, things like that. And then if you put your hair in the same style, of course, it's going to break off in certain areas. So I can't wear it like this all the time. That's why you see me change it so much because I try to make sure I'm not putting too many bands on it or whatever else. And so, <laughs> so when, once I decided to go natural, I, I, when I first did the big chop, I did like a video and stuff. And then as I started to grow out my hair, I started to like show it at one year, two year, three years. And at three years, I managed to get my hair, I think, to bra strap length. And then I don't know what happened. I hit like some kind of plateau. And I was like, and it's so weird because the first year it grew so fast. It was like, my hair was like this short and it was cute too, but it was like real short. And that wasn't the first time that I cut my hair that short. I had it that short after I had my daughter, then I grew it back down to the, the same month that it had been forever. And then, <laughs> then, um, I ended up doing the big chop. And when I did the big chop, my hair was like literally this long. And a year one, I think my hair was like back to the length that it was that it never grew past. And then the next year, my hair was like right here. And then year three, my hair was like back here, the same length it was when I was like, seven, eight years old. And so <laughs> I was just, it's just my goal at first, when I first went natural was I'm just going to grow my hair to here. And then I'm, I'm going to just perm it or, you know, just be a straight hair natural, which is where you keep your natural hair. You don't get perms or anything, but you get it straightened a lot, which could cause heat damage. I don't know. But I was thinking about like trying to heat train my hair and just wearing it straight. I know this is like a little side note and nobody needs to know all that information. But I'm saying that because I think it's important for us to do what benefits us. Sometimes we look at what other people are doing and we feel like we need to do that thing. Like if I listen to other people say like when I first went natural and I was a hot mess at the beginning because I didn't know what to do with my hair. It was short. It was that awkward stage. So I was like, I kind of just want to like walk around with like a bandana or something, not a bandana, but like some kind of satin scarf tied with like the little bow. Like you see some people wear and stuff like that. I wanted to do that for the year that my hair was growing until I could get like some kind of length on it. So I could put it into a ponytail or a puff or pineapple or whatever else. And so it was like a really weird stage and people would be like, just perm your hair, just wear it straight. Like, and I, when I say people, it's like the one or two same people that will constantly say that. But anyways, <laughs> eventually they got used to it and they started liking my hair this way. And I got like more comfortable with doing different styles and trying different techniques that like help maintain my hair. Like even now, like it's so weird because my hair could be like, I don't know how long it was the last time I measured it. But I want to say it's like right here or something like that. I don't know. But I want to try to grow it to here, but I don't know if I don't have a real reason why I want to grow it that length. I just feel like it would be like accomplishing a goal because I haven't been able to, I've never had hair past that, that length. So if I could get it to that length and I could take care of it and, and really like nourish it and all that other stuff, like I'm supposed to, it'll be a goal that I can get to. And so, but other than that, like, it's not because like I want my hair that long because I want to like accidentally sit on it when I'm like doing other stuff. Like even now, <laughs> the length that it is when I wear out and straight, I have to sometimes like pull it back because I'm not used to my hair just being down near my face. Or like if it's like starting to get a little warmer out or like I'm exercising or something and my hair is coming down down here, I'm thinking something's on me <laughs> and it's my hair. but. I just, it's hard to like get used to it when it's straight because I only straighten it like one, to, one to three times a year anyways. So I'm always like, what is that? Oh yeah, it's my hair. <laughs> Cause you see how it is now. And then when it is like curly, it's like, it literally only comes to there when it's curly. And so it looks like I have really short hair, but I don't have really short hair, but it, I mean, short or long regardless of what length it is it's still nice and it's 
thick and it's healthy. So that's what matters. And so <laughs> I know I said a lot about hair in the first like 10 minutes of this video and hopefully you're still here. But early this morning, I, I woke up from a nightmare. I feel, I don't, I'm gonna stop trying, I'm gonna stop saying ashamed, but I feel like I should say it because you need to know where my heart is when I'm saying this. <laughs> so I had this dream about this guy and he keeps trying to get my attention. And I, I noticed him at first and then I started talking to someone else that I know that was like a family member. And then we're, we're sitting beside each other and he looks like he really wants to tell me something, but he doesn't say it. He just kind of looks at me. I know I'm always telling the story of my dreams, but but it's relevant. I, <laughs> I assure you this is relevant. OK, so so he's saying something and I'm trying to figure out what he says. And then this other girl walks up and she like sits beside him. He starts talking to this other girl and I just like kind of feel like. OK, well, maybe he wasn't interested in the first place or something. I don't know. But I just start to like leave. And as I'm leaving, like I'm standing at the door like a weird person. <laughs> I'm just like standing there. I can't see anything in the door or anything. But like I leave and walk out and I'm like, nobody came to like make sure that I was OK. But how would people be able to read my mind? But this is a dream, so it doesn't matter. But anyways, I'm just like, nobody came in to make sure I'm okay or anything. Like they just let me leave like that. And I was standing outside looking super sad in my dream. And then thinking about this person, like, oh, like maybe it's just not meant to be. And then I just started feeling like this singe of like insecurity and jealousy in my dream. Like maybe something was wrong with me. And that's why he chose the other person. And it's a dream. Like, I'm like, really though? <laughs> I'm really in my feelings in a dream though. And so I wake up and I want to go back to sleep, but I'm like, I don't want to have that dream ever again. Like, I don't want to feel insecure and jealous. You know, I don't want to feel unwanted. I want to feel like me. And so God just said, get up. And I got up. I was like, I don't want to go back to sleep. I mean, I really wanted to go back to sleep to get more rest, but I didn't want to go back to sleep to have another dream like that. And I don't know where it came from. I wasn't thinking about this person or anything. It just happened. And when when I went to get up, at first I was laying and I was like praying. And then God was like, get up. And I was like, okay, I need to really get up. And then I could feel some like of those insecure thoughts from like two and a half, three years ago flooding my mind. And I was like, oh, no. And I could just hear the like uh the one of the pastors from like a previous sermon had said when god says get up some of us want to lay in the bed or stay in the bed and try to pray but he said the devil gets up early he never takes a day of rest so sometimes when god tells us to get up we have to get up right then we don't need to stall we don't need to wait we don't need to be lazy praying we need to be up we need to be on the bedside on our knees in prayer like literally hard in prayer and so when that flashed in my mind, when that thought came to my mind, I was like, absolutely, Satan's not about this. This is my this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I started quoting the scriptures. I mean, I made my bed. I'm sitting there on the, on the side of the bed like this, like God, you know, <laughs> like praying hard. When I say I prayed hard, like I was praying and praying and praying. And the next thing you know, the alarm goes off like and the next thing you know. <laughs> it's almost time to get ready and I'm just like look I'm not giving the adversary any avenue not a, a foothold no nothing in my thought process in my mind and it's so funny because I was reading this book yesterday and in the book they were saying that it's so funny how you could feel like you're in pain because of your body but your mind is really manipulating your your body because your mind is that powerful and it's true because you notice some people with a heartbreak, their heartbreak is really in their mind. It's what they're thinking of themselves. It's what they're thinking that they're lacking. That's making them feel like they have this pain in their heart that makes them feel like they're being crushed in their spirit. But really what's happening is their mind is telling them that they're not good enough or that they missed out on something great or that they're that something is wrong with them. And it's so funny because your mind is so powerful. It could change things in an instant. 
But because we don't think like that, usually most people think about the things that they don't have. Most people think about the things that that they're they're lacking or the things that they don't get to do much like Eve or much like other other people in the world. You notice them saying, I'm, I'm losing out on the love of my life or I'm losing out on this amazing job. What are you really losing out on? If that was for you, God would have gave it to you. He is not just some mean kid trying to hold something back from you because it's, it's good for you. He's not giving it to you because you deserve better. He's not giving it to you because you are not graced for that person, place or thing. He's not giving it to you because you might not be ready. And it's so funny because God has been like really talking to me, letting me know that I'm not ready about certain stuff in my life. And it's not just relationships. It's, it's certain things all the way across the board. Like when it comes to my business, like I was feeling like, OK, I've been doing my business for a while. And I I do like it's so funny because I'll like put some effort into it and I'll do stuff with my business. And then I'll kind of just like I'll, I'll work on it a little every day. But I'm doing like some of the same things I'm not doing like. Sometimes I'll like be intentional and I'll go full force, but that's not all the time. And so when I'm going full force, it'll be like once every month or once every other week or something like that. And so when I'm doing it, I'm feeling like, okay, when I'm doing things like that, it's going good. When I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm going to wait until this other event next month or something else, instead of being in preparation for what is to come, then nothing is happening. And so I'm kind of like, I want to grow my business, but how can I grow my business if I'm not being super intentional with it? If I'm not putting all of my effort into it, if I'm being lax about my business or if I'm not putting as much effort as I need to. And now it's I don't want to speak that into existence, but I had more time before and now I don't have that type of time. And I, I really took for granted the time that I did that God blessed me with to be able to work on my business, because now it's so many other things going on in my life that I can't even most of the time I don't even get a moment to to grow things here and there like I've had I have this family member who is super talented and I'm supposed to work with them to oh because you know I do life coaching and I try to work with people like healing and growing and bettering themselves and self-love self-care things like that so when it comes to like because I've started a business and because they are super talented what I've been trying to do with them is to get them to open like an e-commerce store and they could do something there. They could do something at different events and then they could test it out to see what products people like the most and what they like the most about it and do like some kind of toll or something else to see like what are the best products. And I'm not saying she has to stick to that, but then that way she will see exactly what it is that the customers like so that she will be selling them something that they want and not just something that she likes. You know, because sometimes like for me and my business, the things that I love, some people are just like, oh, OK. But then the things that are just like, oh, this is just something I threw together or something like that. People are like, oh, my gosh, this is so cute. Oh, I need to get more of those. And it's so funny because I got this bracelet. These bracelets that I do that are like my most popular item was something that I was just sitting up one night. And I was writing and I was like all into different business stuff. And I was like, this is so cute. I was like, you know, I could probably do something with that. And it was just like a little second thought. It wasn't even like I, I really, I did research the material and things like that, but I didn't even like spend a lot of time looking to see, like, it wasn't one of those things where I was like, Ooh, people would love this. It was just like, I really like this. And then people really started liking it. But on some stuff where I like put together things or I do something different, it'll be people that'll be like, mm, OK, you know, like they'll kind of look at it and then they kind of move on. But they buy like certain other items that I have. But then um, when I go to different events, people like different things. But this is the main thing that most people do like. And no, this this is one of my most popular items, but every event is different. Because I, I don't know if it's because of the area or what, but like some people love like the stuff things that I have. Some people love the bracelets. Some people love the T-shirts that I had or whatever else. And it's just like different place, every different place, somebody likes something different. So I can never just bring one item unless I'm going to the same area and people requested it. But usually I have to bring like 
the bulk of of things and then people just kind of pick which thing they like or which things they like from my business which is still good but it's like it's one of those things and so I try to like when I talk to that person let them know hey do a toll do this do that make sure you're following what it is that that God wants you to do and if this is something that you're passionate about and she wasn't talented I would just say oh you know like do a little here and there but she's really talented and I really could see this this be like a really, really profitable business, a profitable business for her. And so I want to help in any way that I can to make sure that she can, she can see like, and believe in herself and know like, Hey, you could really do this, you know, cause sometimes it's going to sound silly and some people won't understand it, but sometimes people really just need to hear somebody say that they can do it because they feel like they might have talent or they feel like they might be good at something and they really don't understand or they really don't believe it for themselves. They think, oh, no, that's no big deal. Oh, no, that's not really. It's OK. But really, it looks like that, you know, but they're the only people that.